Hello and welcome. You're watching the Trey Hart Learning Channel. And today on the Trey Hart Learning Channel, we are going to be talking about the flu. Stick around. Yes, it's the beginning of November. And when November rolls around, everybody starts talking about the flu. So you will probably notice that your healthcare providers, that nurses, that if you go into a Walgreens, if you go into an HEB or any pharmacy, that they're going to be asking you about the flu vaccine. Well, between November and March the 30th or the beginning of April, this is what happens. Flu season lasts about that long, and so that's what I'm going to be talking about. Now you may or may not be aware that every year about 500,000 people die as a result of the flu. So this is why that the vaccine and other things are talked about during this time. During this, during this season, uh, people are also affected by the colds. Now uh, both the cold and the flu are both viruses and so I'm going to be telling you a little bit about the differences between each. Now there are many viruses that cause the cold as there is only one that causes the flu. Now there's different forms of that one, but it is the influenza one, but there's different forms of it, but there's only one that causes it. Now every year, as the year rolls around, when it comes to November and they're starting to give you the flu, they're starting to offer the flu vaccines, all the flu vaccines are based off of the previous uh, year before that. So what they'll do is they take the three most common flus that were prevalent in the country where you're at and they will make flu vaccines based upon them. So, so people sometimes say, well, how can I tell the difference between the cold and the flu? The unfortunate thing is, is there are many similarities between the two and there are some subtle differences. The, the similarities are usually, you know, you're going to have um, aches and stuff like that. But I'm going to, I'm going to talk about the differences. For instance, if you have the flu, your symptoms will be abrupt. Their onset is going to be abrupt. They, you will usually have a fever that lasts three to four days. You will also have aches. They're usually often severe. And your cheer, you will have chills, and these are fairly common. Now, the unusual things that might would happen with a flu is to have fatigue or weakness, to have sneezing, stuffy nose, or sore throat. Those are usually associated with a cold rather than the flu. Now, chest discomfort and cough is very common and can be severe when it comes to the flu. Uh, it's usually moderate, mild to moderate, and it's usually a hacking cough when it's the flu, when it's a, when it's a cold, excuse me. Now, as well, a uh, headache is very common when you have the flu, but it's very rare when you have a cold. One of the things about the fever is you will very rarely have a fever if it's associated with a cold. Now, just because you don't have a fever doesn't mean it's not the flu, but usually you will have a fever if you have the flu. Now, a cold, if you have a cold, it's usually, when it comes on, it's very gradual. It usually is very rare to have a fever associated with it. And it's very uncommon to have chills. Now, the fatigue and weakness is only sometimes as well as where, you know, when I was talking about the flu, you will usually or, or sometimes have it. Um, but it's usually, I mean, the cold it's sometimes, but with the flu, it's usual to have the, the fatigue and weakness. And as I said before, like the sneezing, the stuffy nose, the sore throat, 
is very common to have with a cold, but is not very common to have those with a flu. As well, it's very rare to have a headache with a cold as well as where it's very common to have the flu. So the most common flu symptoms are a fever, a cough, a sore throat, a runny and stuffy nose, even though it is not always associated with the flu, muscle or body aches, fatigue, tiredness, and some people may have vomiting or diarrhea. So the CDC recommends that everybody, basically everybody that's six months or older should have the flu vaccine. Now people say, well, does that mean I have to have the flu vaccine? And no, it doesn't mean that you have to have the flu vaccine. But one of the best treatments is to prevent you from having the flu in the first place. Because otherwise what will happen is when you become sick, you have a chance of infecting others that may not have the immune system around you of having the flu. Some people also ask, well, I got the flu vaccine, but I still got the flu last year. And yes, sometimes that happens. Is even though there is only um, one type of flu, there are several variations of that type of flu. And so it may mean that the flu vaccine that you had didn't cover that variation, even though now when you go get the flu vaccine, it usually covers the three most common from the years before. It doesn't mean that that's going to be one of the variations that happens when you get it. But just because you got it doesn't... Um, one of the things that they say is that the flu vaccine will help lessen your symptoms of it. There are people who absolutely should get the flu vaccine. Those are people that have chronic conditions uh, such as asthma, diabetes, heart disease, pregnant women, and young children. Uh, they should absolutely get the flu vaccine. And those people, you know, um, I would advise everybody to get the flu vaccine. But of those that don't fall into those categories, um, just be aware that the flu may put you out of commission for up to two weeks. Be out of commission means that you're not able to go to work, you're not earning a wage for up to two weeks. And you know, if you're like me, you can't afford that. Some of the warning signs that might happen, some of the warning signs are like in children, these might be fast breathing or trouble breathing. They might have a bluish skin color, which means they're not getting enough oxygenation or they might not be drinking enough fluids, or they not, might not be waking up or not interacting. Basically, they become lethargic. And some of the other, uh, the other spectrum is that is becoming so irritable that they don't um, want to be held. And sometimes their symptoms might uh, suddenly might improve but then it worsens and it returns with a fever or cough. And sometimes they'll have a fever or rash. Now in adults, some of these symptoms are similar. They'll have difficulty breathing or shortness of breath. They'll have pain or pressure in the chest or abdomen. They're gonna have sudden dizziness, confusion, severe or persistent vomiting, flu symptoms that improve, but then return with a fever or worsen with cough. Now all of these symptoms are warning signs of the flu worsening. And if you ever suspect any of your diseases are worsening, the best idea for you is to call your doctor. Basically, let a local health care provider know. Some of the worrisome signs are being unable to eat, having trouble breathing, having no tears when crying, or if you have a young child, having significantly fewer wet diapers. Some of the ways of preventing the flu, obviously, Get your flu vaccine. That's one of the best ways of preventing getting your flu. Use good hand hygiene. Basically wash your hands during the flu season. Even though flu is spread by, drop it, by droplets, meaning people coughing, and droplets spread through, your, uh, spread through the air, it, there is a slight possibility of you um, getting contamination on your, on your hands. And 
So you want to use good hand hygiene. And during the flu season, you want to avoid touching areas like your mouth and your eyes. Those are areas that are easy for the flu to get into. So you want to make sure that you ha have good hand hygiene with that. You want to make sure as well that if you do have the flu, that if you do get the flu, that you stay at home, that you don't go to work, that you don't spread the flu to others. I know a lot of people don't want to miss out on the wages. Uh, it's like I said before, you can't afford to miss out on those wages. But it's very important for you not to go to work or not to have that temptation to go to work so that you don't spread the flu to others who might be more susceptible to the, the severe conditions that could possibly be caused from the flu. One of the things that, that led to, to the countries being uh, so concerned about why the flu, what happened to the flu. Now one of the links I'm going to include below is a link to the flu pe pandemic of 1918. It's a, it's a book and it talks about, it's a, a very well written book that talks about the flu pandemic and how it was killing more people then. Now if the, if the flu pandemic of 1918 was the same as today, say there was an outbreak today, I'm not talking about a flu, but of a similar virus, then uh, over 1.5 million people would be killed from it. So if you was to compare that of today, now we are still talking about 500,000 people uh, that are affected by it that die from it yearly. So that's still a significant number, but it's not as much as then. So if you're interested in this, I'm going to put a link down below and you're welcome to read that. So my name is Ray Upchurch and hopefully you enjoyed this. If you like the content, please press the like button. If you're not a current subscriber, please subscribe. And today as well, I'm going to talk about one other thing. It's unusual for me to talk about other conditions that are not related to heart, but this is a health condition that affects many people throughout the year. And one of the, condi the conditions that I'm going to talk about very briefly is cancer. Now, this is November, and this is the month where some men um, do a unique thing to recognize and to help raise funds for cancer victims. And, and what it is is they don't shave. Basically, they grow their, they grow their facial hair. When, when a lot of people have cancer and they're getting the treatment, one of the common things is for them to lose their hair. So a way to show our support um, and to bring awareness to this is by letting the facial hair grow out. Now we're not just letting the, the facial hair grow out. You might notice that I look a bit unshaved, but as part of this, the funds that we save are contributed to cancer awareness programs. Now one of the cancer awareness programs that I'm going to talk that that if you'd like to look up is called noshave.org and in noshave.org during this month um, I don't have an affiliate link to this and I'd have no affiliation with noshave.org at all but during this month noshave.org brings awareness to cancer and the money if you donate in their site the money goes to the Prevent Cancer Co um, Foundation it goes to the Fight Colorectal Cancer Foundation and it also goes to St. Jude's Children Research Hospital so if you would like to donate to those things help other people help then that's one of the things. Now I have not put a link to that, but the link is no, and it's a, like a negative mark, and then it's 
shave.org and so you can look that up and donate directly to their site and we'll see <laughs> during this November how long I last without shaving um, I actually like to be clean shaven and my wife likes it that I'm clean shaven as well so we'll see how long I last but if you'd like to donate to this and to donate to cancer awareness this is a site that you can go to to do that anyhow thank you for joining me for this um, education session and I will see you next time bye